the esteemed and distinguished guests on the dais, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. I feel humbled to have been given an opportunity by IPPA to represent the industry point of view of the impact of judicial decisions on corporates like us, like me. My office actually wrote me a, a very long speech, and I, but I thought that I will do away with that and just uh, speak to you directly uh, to be more, uh, more realistic. And, uh, so please pardon me if I, if I uh, breach any or violate any protocol because and give me credit to my limited knowledge. But um, cold scam is one such uh, decision, judicial decision, which has impacted the whole country in a very, very major way. I still, after all this has happened, I still wonder, <coughs> what is cold scam? I've been trying to look for the scam, but honestly, I've not found any scam, sir. In, any, in anything we do in life, in any sector, any society, any village, any country, any area of business, work, profession, there will be four, five, seven percent people who do not follow the law, who manipulate law, who take advantage of uh, loopholes in law. The same thing happened here. So there were a bunch of companies who misrepresented while making applications uh, for allocation of coal mines. Is that a scam? It was a very simple thing to do. Those companies should have been identified and should have been acted against under law. And that's it. There wasn't any scam. The government of India, I will take a few minutes to explain this a little bit. The government of India invited corporates to come and invest in power, steel and cement because there were no investments coming forthcoming at that point and they wanted to make the Indian industry competitive that was the spirit behind allocation of coal mines and in response to that invitation and in response to the expression of interest corporates like me went ahead, applied there was a screening committee set up headed and chaired by somebody as high as a secretary coal with representatives from Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Industry, Ministry of Power, representatives from the state governments, representatives from the subsidiaries of Coal India and there were about 25 to 30 people sitting in one room before which each corporate was supposed to go and present the case, talk about the investment they intend to put and then after all the representations are made or presentations are made, the, this group of 25-30 people would discuss among themselves and take the decision to allot a certain mind to a certain company. Could 30 people be managed? It's out of the question, if, if that's the allegation. However, if I have read the judgment correctly, there is no such finger being pointed out at any allotment. There is no mention of any corruption. So a lot of people told me, oh, this is similar to the 2G. No, it's not. In the 2G judgment, it is clear finger being pointed, about, point, pointed out at manipulating the system, hinting towards corruption. There is no hint towards corruption here. So suddenly, a process being followed over 18 years by six democratically elected governments by all the lawmakers of that time has suddenly found to be illegal. With due respect to the Honorable Apex Court, to the judiciary, to the lawmakers, I have, I have very huge regards for all of them. But my point is, can something, can the wisdom of all of these people involved in the process over 18 years be suddenly made to look wrong? Can suddenly be made to look illegal? All stakeholders, investors, bankers, all of them believed in a process to be correct. State governments, they all believed in the process to be correct. And 
it in case it was wrong, in case it is now found to be wrong, should the impact of this not be prospective? Should it be taken retrospective? Is it any fault of a allotty? An allotty, an investor, has believed in his sovereign. I have believed in my country, in my government, in my sovereign. In the promise that paper, that government of India paper promised to me, I believed in that. Put thousands of crores in a power plant, thousands of crores in a steel plant. Suddenly, we don't have a fuel. We don't have fuel. Just to give an example, uh, I don't want to make this a personal case, but I just uh, it's a relevant example. All the mines, by the way, uh, all the mines allotted to private allottees were mines, sir, which Coal India didn't want to touch for the next 25 years. There were such third class horrible mines. The private sector was asked to invest in these mines, which Coal India in a written statement has given that we don't want to touch these mines for the next 25 years. The private sector put all its sweat and blood, money, investment. For example, in our case, we built a beautiful, we built the largest underground coal mine in this country as a single mine. My company, Mono Dispath. Larger than any coal India mine, Singreni mine, Tata mine, the largest underground coal mine in the country. We built a 15 kilometer road to approach the mine. There was no approach to that mine. It was in the middle of a jungle. Spent 10 years operating it. Have 2100 people working there. Invested 8000 crores to consume this coal. And friends, I would like to also mention here that in this, in this process, after the allocation was done, the Ministry of Coal would hold a regular quarterly progress review meeting. In this so-called review meeting, progress review meeting, we were threatened by the bureaucracy, cancellations of mine, if we would not put up the end use plant. So we, we all pushed that investment in fear that we will lose the money. We built those large world-class assets for this nation. The steel plant or the power plant is for this nation. We built it. And suddenly, we don't have fuel. It's all wrong. Thank God this judgment has come. Thank God this matter is finally settled. Till one and a half years, the last one and a half years, I would hesitate in a party, in public, to say that I own a mine. To look at me as a gangster. That if you are a mine, if you've got a mine, then you must have done something wrong. 214 blocks were allotted. And CBI has been able to file FIR in 17 or 20, uh, in 17 or 20 cases. Less than 10%. Is this a scam? 295. Now I want to ask you a question. The, the, the Honorable Court has gone by the premise that the exchequer has lost 295 rupees a ton and they have put that as a penalty retrospectively. Just for information <coughs> of all here, CAG never said that the government of India lost 295 rupees. CAG has looked at the year 2010-11 of Coal India, the balance sheet of Coal India, and have simply commented in this report that Coal India in that year has made 295 rupees as profit. In the event there would have been an auction, maybe a part of this 295, the ex sugar could have got. This is the comment of CHG. I want to ask another question. I am told that the CHG is supposed to do an annual audit of the government of India. They get salary monthly basis. Everybody working under the CHG. What was the CHG doing for 18 years? How come they found something wrong in the process after 18 years? Did they not do an audit in 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 2000? 
could they not tell the government that the process you are following today is wrong? Suddenly, out of, after, after 18 years, CAG finds something wrong with the government of India, which a process being followed by six governments over 18 years. Isn't that strange? 295 rupees was the profit calculated by CAG in the balance sheet of coal India out of open cast mines. CAG clearly mentioned that the calculation does not cater to underground coal mines because all underground coal mines of coal India is making losses. The balance sheet of coal India of 2013-14 clearly says all our underground coal mines make a loss. The Honorable Minister of Coal in the Parliament in August gave, it, gave details of the losses made by individual mines. But unfortunately, this 295 has been given, has been penalized for even the underground coal mines. Retrospectively, from 2003, in 2003, the price of coal was 180 rupees. How can somebody pay a penalty of 295? The price itself of coal was 180 rupees. But suddenly, we are, uh, a reference is taken, uh, picked up from, uh, for year 2010-11 and given retrospective effect for 2003-2001. CAG has also gone ahead to say that companies who have performed well should be incentivized. Where is that incentive? We performed well. All of us performed well. The 42 operating blocks performed well. They spent years and years together going through the tedious laws in place for land acquisition. Four years, five years spent in the environment ministry. Suddenly a government comes and declares 50%, 70% of the area as no government allots your mine. Pushes you to invest based on that mine. And the, another faction of the same government declares that particular coal mine as a part of no-go area and would not be given forest lands. <laughs> What are we supposed to do? What is the private sector supposed to do at the end of the day? We talk about make, make in India, we talk about inviting investments. But can we really handle this the way it's being handled? Can we, can we do what have we, we have done till now? I, I agree with Mr. Harry Doll. I mean, till the time profiteering doesn't become a good word in this country, Till the time wealth creators are not looked at with suspicion, they are given credible, they are given, they are given respect. I don't think the society can ever become rich. How can it become? We, for example, now after the uh, uh, the honourable Supreme Court turned down, cancelled all the licences allotments, the government was supposed to put together an auction process. I actually, it's commendable the way the government so quickly put it together. It's really commendable. I mean, it's really hard work done by the bureaucracy, by the politicians involved, all the relevant people. But I want to know, we, we went to the government with a representation saying that right first right of refusal should be given at least to the operating mines. The, the mine is operating, the end use plant is operating, give us an opportunity to get back our own minds. People in the system are so scared. CBI, CVC, press, courts. They said, no, somebody will point a finger at us saying that the no true price discovery was done because of the rofer. All our lives we have seen PSUs getting 10% price preference in international tenders. Do we not discover the right price? BHEL, if there's a power uh, tender by, uh, if the equipment purchase tender by NTPC, BHEL is given 10% price preference. The whole world, all, all uh, boilers and turbine manufacturers bid for it. So do we not get the uh, price discovery? But we were not given. Now what is going to happen? Let's understand. I have a mine here. Obviously, every entrepreneur put up the investment very in very close proximity to the mine. 
So I have a mind here in Chhattisgarh, I have a plant here, standing, running, consuming that coal. I don't get this mine, somebody in Karnataka gets this mine. So this coal will now travel 2000 kilometers to Karnataka, putting stress on the already stressed logistics and infrastructure we have in this country. And I will get coal from some other mine, if I'm, happy, if I'm lucky to get a linkage from for India, from some other mine, many hundreds of kilometers away from coal India. I don't understand. Is this commercial logic? Is this good to the country? Is this good for the country? We, our biggest uh, current account deficit, our biggest problem is uh, the oil, the spend on oil. We import 60% of our needs. Uh, okay, 80%. So it only substantiates my point further. 80%. Can we burn that doing this cra these crazy things? We don't have railways. Our ports are choked. We have no highways and roads. We don't have enough vehicles. <coughs> and this is what is going to emerge now. So now we're going to have an auction where people are going to bid. Anybody and everybody bidding for any mine and every mine. And the whole logistics is going to get skewed. But then I guess that is better off that being written about in the press or somebody pointing a finger. Well, my point is that we need to encourage and support industry. Why the USA is the most developed nation in this world? Because they adopted capitalism five, six decades ago. They let everything happen market-driven. They put policies in place and they let everything happen, mar happen market-driven. There was competition, healthy competition. We talk about inflation. Uh, inflation, I would say, with my limited knowledge, is the supply-side constraint. And why is the supply-side constraint there? Because we never encourage the industry. We should have surplus electricity, we should have surplus steel, we should have surplus <coughs> cement. The market forces will bring down the prices. There will be no inflation. We have curtailed by artificially <coughs> choking it, the system. By, by rules, by putting rules and regulations which artificially choke development. So, and if I, with all, all respect to the apex court in a very simple plain manner this particular judgment for example if i can say it ki gunah kisi aur ka saza kisi aur ko gunah to paya gaya government of india mein unhone soft unhone follow nahi kiya process magar punishment to hame mil raha allotment allotments ko mila because the government of India will get the money. Now the government has got all these mines back to earn a lot of money. So somebody who has not followed the process, who has done an illegal act, is actually been, is going to now make tons of money for doing that illegal act. And somebody who has given their personal guarantees, has sweated out, put, taken large loans, and put up these large investments for this nation, for the consumption of this nation. If a power plant comes into being, it may be an investment made by a company, but end of the day, that power goes to yours and my houses. It lights the bulb in our houses. Those people, sorry? That's another one. So suddenly these mines will not be there. They will be bidding thousands Hundreds of crores will be spent in the bidding. The coal is going to get very expensive, not only because of the bid price, but because of the logistics, skewed logistics now. And all of that will become a pass-through for power. Till one and a half years ago, Salman Bhai is sitting right here. He's been, he's an eminent lawyer, been a very important minister in the UP government. He will second this, that the government forever has been super sensitive about the 
tariff a consumer will pay. Today, the sensitivity is gone. Because either you can make money out of the coal mines, or you can be sensitive about the consumer. You can't do both. So, today we will have coal mines coming out for bidding. People will bid, go crazy bidding, about, uh, bidding around it. And then the price of coal is going to become huge. That will be a pass-through for the consumer and the price of the, uh, the power is going to be 7 rupees. In one year's time, generating companies who today sell power at 2 rupees 50 paisa to a discount, which we finally get in our homes after all the transmission and distribution losses, etc., etc., or the theft or whatever spill fridges, we get it in our home at 7 rupees. Generating, generating stations to make only a 13, 14, 15 percent ROI will have to sell this power above 6 rupees. We in our homes will get it at 10. This is the going to be the repercussion of this so called coal gate, coal scam. So it's very sad that this has happened. Very unfortunate. I have all my respect for the Apex Core. I wish, I just wish that there was a committee form and everybody's case would have been individually looked at, the merits of each case, and a decision taken depending on, you know, uh, any mischief or any uh, wrongdoing by neurotic. This has very severe, 4 lakh crores is the investment made in the last 10 years, 8 years by the steel, power and cement companies as a result of this allocation. We also proposed to the government. We said we have created this power plant, here is the mine, please auction it together. Let a buyer who wants to be in the business of generating power Come tomorrow morning, cut out a check, win the bid, and start generating, be in business. The economic interest cannot be separated. It is interdependent on each other. It exists today because of each other. But no, it didn't happen. So the mine is going to be auctioned separately. The liability of the asset is going to be on the, on the person who believed in his sovereign and invested, with his personal guarantees to banks. And then the rest of the country will see in the next few days, few years to come. So, sir, I mean, with all due respect, anything which has got a technical angle to it, anything which has got far reaching commercial impact, I think lawmakers, other people, uh, relevant people, should consult experts. Should, should get into the depth before, you know, actions are taken. Uh, with these words, I would like to say, uh, Mr. Dhawan, thank you very much for inviting me. And I hope I've not violated or breached any protocol, uh, I do not know. So I already apologize right in the beginning. And thank you very much. <coughs>